Adventure. Tonight's action-packed story by Ron Evans is called One Fall for a Lady Breaker. You're late. Sorry, Mr. Roslett. There was a traffic pile-up on the M1. You should have left earlier then. All right, close the door. You brief the others? Yeah, they'll be in position at 11 prompt. Bert and Ernie will be waiting on Channel 33. They know the drill. Well, I hope they don't meet with any traffic pile-ups. This is a once-only chance to make the hit. Well, they left before me, so they must be close to station by now. Yes, all right. Now, I'll go briefly through it once again for you. Twelve American Air Force lorries will leave Densham Air Base at precisely 0915. They'll travel along the M1 to this point here, where they'll turn off and go along the old road towards Greenton. Their intention is to continue along this road here and come out on the M6. What I don't get is why they don't stay on the M1. Every trip north with nuclear warheads is a complicated and secret operation, mostly to avoid demonstrations and, well, deliberate attempts by the media to publicize the transfer. You know what a noise those CND nuts can make. As a result, this time, and this time only, this will be their route on the first part of the journey. How can you be sure that they'll make this diversion? Yes, I shall be paying a lot of money for the information if it proves correct, which I'm certain it is. I spent all last weekend studying this route, and here, just outside this village, is perfect. A narrow country road with a sharp bend. Now, if the men perform their parts with military precision, nothing but nothing can go wrong. Well, we're all ex-army, Mr. Aslett. They won't let you down. It was a beautiful June morning when I got a phone call from the office asking me to take the day off and work on Saturday instead. Considering the weather, I didn't mind at all. I got into my car and drove over to Sally's house. I could see her blonde head bobbing behind the hedge as I drove up the path. Sally! Chris, what are you doing off work? I'm working on Saturday instead. So that means our day out on Saturday is cancelled. No, just brought forward to today. <laughs> Look, it's glorious. Perfect for a long drive. But I'm not ready, Chris. Why didn't you phone? Well, I thought I'd surprise you. Well, you have. I was gardening. You've got five minutes to get ready. Chris Fender, the young man in a hurry. <laughs> That's me, Sally. Oh, go into the house and wait. Help yourself to a cup of coffee. Mm -mm. That'll give you an excuse to go slow. I'll be waiting here. So off you go at the double. If you keep your eyes peeled to the left, you'll see a narrow turn-off that leads to Mark Day's farm. Now, note it well, and all the signs leading to it. It's where I take the Air Force lorry. Yes, all the way up to the farm. You'll be met there, and all you have to do is follow instructions. Within a few minutes, the lorry will no longer exist. And what about the tire tracks? Well, as you pass by, men will be there to brush over the tracks. You've thought of everything, eh, Mr. Resler? As far as it's humanly possible, yes. Yeah. Uh, there you are, that's the farm road. It's pretty distinctive with that big oak tree on the corner. Yeah. Within a half an hour of your arrival at the farm, it'll be able to withstand a thorough search by the police and the military authorities. This is a big operation, Wally. Nothing's been left to chance. Bert and Ernie should be within range. Now, call them up. 33, copy for Red Ranger. Red Ranger for copy. Are you on 20? On 20. Okay, 1010, Red Ranger. Do you copy, Red Bishop? You on 20? Affirmative. On 20. I'm all on 5, 10, 10. Now, all right, leave it open on channel 33 in case I need to call back. Blissfully unaware of the danger that lay ahead, I turned off the M1 motorway and headed into the unspoiled countryside. You haven't said where we're going yet. Oh, same plan as Saturday, wherever our noses take us. 
We should be at the small village of Medwick, about 11, which, uh, according to my tour book, has an inn called The Lost Boot, which dates from the 15th century. Mm -hmm. We can stop there for a drink and take a look at the old church later. Oh, old churches are a turn-off, Chris. What's so special about this one? Well, it's 300 years older than the inn and filled with ancient medieval relics. Oh, by that time I'll be starving. Where do we eat? <laughs> I'm sure the inn serves food. We can have lunch there. Right. Well, that will take us through to two o'clock. What then? Well, then we can continue north along these country roads as far as Danchester, and then we'll turn east to the M1. Okay, by me. Oh, can I use the CB? <laughs> Help yourself. One four for a copy. I don't think you'll find many breakers in this neck of the woods, except perhaps a passing motorist. Oh, you never know. Breaker, one four for a copy. Take a channel, Lady Breaker. There you are, Chris. Take it up to one eight. Going up. On channel. On channel. Are you well by Lady Breaker? Yes, heading for Medwick. What's your twenty? I'm home based at Limford. Aha, we'll be passing through there in a few minutes. I was half listening to Sally as we drove past some of the most beautiful countryside I'd ever seen. Meanwhile, a mile south of Medwick, Clive Hazlitt and his companion Wally Smith passed two lorries that were parked 50 feet away from each other on the narrow country road. They stopped behind the first one. Everything okay? Yeah, fine, Mr. Hazlitt. Good. Wally, you go over and see how Bert is in the other lorry, would you? Okay. You open on channel 33? Uh, yes, Chief. Not a peep since Wally last called up. I have a car following the last Air Force lorry. He'll make contact and give us a countdown as soon as I get closer. His handle's Red Ruby. Right. Any questions about the job while it's time? Oh, it seems pretty clear, Chief. All we do is make a barrier between the main convoy and the rear lorry... Deal with whoever's on it and then scarper. Mm -hmm. What then? Well, uh, Wally takes over the lorry, turns it round, takes it to wherever it is he's supposed to. Me, Bert, and the others, uh, we go to your car and uh, another follow-up car and get clear. Yes, that'll do. The other follow-up car will be a red estate car with a W registration. It'll be abandoned ten miles from here when you find a change of vehicle. Driver knows the drill. Uh, it's all pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, but... Um, Seeing that car pass by uh, reminds me of something else, though. Uh -huh. Look, I know this road isn't used very much, but uh, what if another car comes up behind while we're doing the job? Yes, well, that's a risk we have to take. The chances are slim, but if it does happen, you'll have to deal with the occupants as you did with the lorry driver and guards. Kill him? There's no alternative. Ah, I don't like that idea, Chief. The lads either. Oh, it's a bit different shooting a few yanks that are armed, but, uh, well, not civilians who haven't got nothing to do with it, uh, We'll be masked and... We can't afford witnesses, Ernie. The success of the entire operation depends on it. What if these occupants were to note our car numbers, eh? Or even worse, have a CB radio to give out an alarm? Well, the lorries will have radio transmitters, surely. Yes. Now, that's their weak spot, Ernie. They can only communicate with their base at Densham. We have a good 30 minutes before they can start any effective operation to catch us. By that time, we'll all be clear. Well, if you say so, Okay. I'll tell the lads that uh, anyone coming up gets dead. Tell the men to keep their voices down. Quiet in there, fellas. You'll be able to make all the noise you like soon. Three, three. Red out of the copy. Good. They're coming into range. Answer it, would you? Red Ranger on channel. I can ten five. Okay, okay, Red Ranger. I'll be on our twenty in three minutes. Ten four, ten twenty. Yeah, it must be moving faster than I expected. Wally, we're ready to go. Go, Chief. Get the men into their positions. Now, now, now. There were ten men involved in the actual robbery. Six of them had been hidden inside the two lorries. These were dressed in camouflage gear, and their faces were completely covered by black balaclavas. On instruction, they now came from their hiding places and took up prearranged ambush positions on the narrow country road. They were heavily armed and motivated mainly by the prospect of 20,000 pounds 
they would receive on the successful conclusion of their operation. Meanwhile, Sally had tired of chattering to her CB acquaintance, and she now sat back and watched the passing scenery. How much further, Chris? Well, the last signpost said three miles. Oh, I'm looking forward to a drink. <laughs> You'll be getting it in a few minutes. Oh, blast. Well, what's wrong? Well, look up ahead. There's a convoy of army lorries crawling along. Well, hardly crawling. They can't go much faster on a road like this. Well, all the same, they should use the blooming motorways, not country roads. And you see, there's another poor blighter in a red car who's also stuck behind them. All right, so we have to wait an extra minute or two. <sighs> well, don't get impatient and try to overtake. Well, the road's far too narrow to risk it. Oh, look, now they're going even slower. There must be some kind of obstruction ahead. Can you see anything from your side? Um, yes, it, it looks like two lorries at the roadside facing this way. Oh, nothing to worry about. They're passing them without too much trouble. It happened so suddenly that all I could do was jam on the brake and try to see what was happening. The red car ahead of me had reversed into the grass verge and was making a three-point turn. This gave me a clear view of four men in camouflage clothes running out and firing point-blank into the driving cab of the last army lorry. Between it and the rest of the military lorries, the two lorries that had been parked were now lying across the width of the road, effectively blocking it. Uh, what are they doing? I don't know, love, but I'm getting the hell out of here. Uh they're really killing each other. I swerved and went into a quick three-point turn. The captured lorry was also turned, and I saw two of the masked men run towards us, their weapons leveled. As I frantically turned my car about, there was a pitched battle raging across the barrier formed by the two lorries that had been used to cut off the military vehicle. Keep your head down, Sally! The men who had been running towards us had stopped, and one of them opened fire with his gun. Bullets slammed into the car, punching holes into the bodywork and smashing the side windows. Miraculously, none of the bullets hit us, but we were both showered by stinging broken glass. Last, I was facing the way we'd come, and I slammed my foot on the accelerator and took off like a frenetic Formula One driver. What in the name of heaven is happening, Chris? A full-scale military-style hijack, by the look of it. So those men were trying to kill us. You don't have to tell me. Just look at the state of my car. They won't come after us, will they? I hope not. But listen, get on that CB and call up your good buddy. Tell him what you've seen and get him to contact the police by phone. He's not going to believe it. One four night errand. One four night errand. Night errand, do you copy? One four night errand, do you copy? This is urgent. He mustn't have his ears on. Just call anyone for a copy. One four for copy. One four one four for copy. Is anybody listening out there? One four for copy. This is urgent. Will some break a copy? Go down to channel nine. Channel 09. Channel 09, this is an emergency. Does anybody copy me? This is an emergency call. This is an emergency call. Does anybody copy? This is the trouble with being out in the sticks. Damn it. All we can do is run like the clappers for Bolston and contact the police there. Can't we stop at a farmhouse and use the phone? Well, there aren't many farmhouses, as you can see. And besides, what are we being followed? No, Sal, it's too darn risky. Shall I keep trying on 14 to get night errands? Of course. Get hold of anybody you can and get them to phone for assistance. Don't argue with me, Wally. Put your foot down more. Everything depends on our catching them. Look, I don't see what harm they can do us now. Look, let me handle this. You heard them calling out some character called Knight Errant, didn't you? If they can arrange for boast and police to be warned, we're in dead trouble. They can seal us off like bees in a jam pot. Well, they were shot up pretty bad. Yes, well, not bad enough, it seems. What about the others, Chief? Well, they're following us, but they'll be carrying straight on to where they can change their car. Lucky blinders. You think so? Three of them were wounded in the action. They deserve a head start. One four for a copy. Oh, blast it, woman. Faster, Wally, faster. Some of these bends are tricky. All right, you're supposed to be a good driver. Now, how about proving it? 
Uh, there's your proof. We just went round that bend up ahead. There's a car coming up behind us. I wonder where he popped up from. It was parked near where they were shooting, Chris. Huh? I saw it just before those men ran towards us. One of them came out of it. Do you think that... Yeah, they're chasing us, all right. They're coming closer. I must try to outrun them. Leave that to me, and you keep trying to make contact on the CB. One four for copy. This is an emergency. I drove like the devil was on my tail, which indeed he was. For a narrow country road, I took the most unbelievable risks. But it paid off, because when I came to a mile-long stretch of straight road, our pursuers had fallen back to half a mile. At the same time, I realized we weren't going to make it to Bolston. My petrol gauge was reading almost empty. Somehow, somewhere along that road, I was going to have to ditch the car. Well, that blasted woman is going to get an answer from a CB freak soon. It's up to you to catch her up. She's got a fast car. One four for a copy. This is an emergency call to any breaker. Do you copy? Here, give me the CB, Mark. I've got an idea to shut her up. Here. Right. I copy you, Lady Breaker. Oh, thank heaven for that. Have you got a telephone? Yes, has there been an accident? Worse. We witnessed what looked like a hijack with a lot of shooting just a couple of miles south of Bedwick. What? Could you telephone Bolster Police and tell them about it? Yes, of course. I'll phone them. Is that all? No. Uh, look, I'm home based in a village a few miles ahead of your present position. I'll get some friends together. We'll block the road, okay? Thank you, thank you. We'll watch out for you. Ten, ten. Ten, ten. Breaker, break. <laughs> well, I think that should make her happy for a while. Oh, well done, Chief. Quick thinking, eh? So all we have to do when we see some people is stop. Well, they'll probably have shotguns and things. Yeah, something smells about that reply. Well, what do you mean? Well, he said he was going to help us. How did he know our location? Oh, perhaps he guessed. And how did he know which direction we were traveling? Oh, easy. He knows we're driving away from Medwick. And didn't he say he was home-based? Well, yes, in a village ahead of us. The nearest village is seven miles from here, yet his signal was at maximum reading. And another thing. He isn't home base because I heard the noise of his car engine under his voice. What are you trying to suggest, Chris? Well, it's a wild guess, but it fits. You could have been talking to the fellow who's chasing us. Oh, but why would he want to... Oh, yes, of course, I see. He wants to keep me off the air. Yeah, that's right. And that's the picture as I see it. <gasps> well, I'd better keep on calling, then. Perhaps I can, I can get hold of night errands. No, oh, just forget about that. There's no time now. Now, listen to me. Listen carefully. Yes. On either side of the CB unit, you'll find two bolts. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. I want you to unfasten them. Use the spanner. You'll find it in the glove locker. But whatever for? Don't ask me questions. I can't explain now. Just go ahead and do it. And put the unit in your bag and bring it with you when we leave the car. Well, what do you mean, Chris? Leave the car? Just that. It's going to run out of petrol any minute. We're going to have to run. And we're going to have to hide somewhere. But that's crazy. I mean, we'll... we'll... Now, listen to me. We're coming to a narrow crossroad ahead. I'm turning off to the right in the hope that he'll either turn left or carry straight on. Now, hang on tight. I went round that corner on two wheels. The road was more like an old cart track, muddy and overgrown. About a half a mile farther on was a break in some trees lining the road. I drove into them and stopped the car where I thought it would be well hidden from passing view. Right, Sally. This is as far as we go. Okay, out you get, and don't forget the CB. What are you doing with the bonnet? I'm, I'm going to take the battery with us. The battery? For what for? Oh, it's heavy, Chris. Of course it's heavy. But I can't work the CB without it. Uh, where's that spanner? Oh, here it is, here in my bag. Well, what do you want it for? Well, you've got the battery out. Yes, I've got the battery out, but we need the ruddy antenna, don't we?
You confounded idiot, you've lost them. Well, I, I think they must have turned off somewhere, Chief. Well, there was a crossroad a little way back. That's it. Turn round, we'll search there. Oh, I don't know, really. Time's getting on a bit. Well, we've got to find them and we've got to kill them. End of debate. Sally was right. The battery was heavy. We struggled through fairly dense undergrowth for a couple of hundred yards, and then we found a copse. I put the CB antenna up on the branch of a tree, and then I connected the unit to the car battery. Then I let Sally take over, while I kept a careful watch. One for any breaker. Do you copy? This is my turn, Betty Breaker. Hang it up to window 30. On channel. Do you copy? This is urgent, Knight Errant. Do you have a telephone? I was trying to raise you a few minutes ago, Lady Breaker. I heard you talking to that other breaker about the hijack outside Medwick. Well, to make sure, I called the Boston police myself. Oh. And then I tried to come back to you. Oh, you did? That's wonderful. The police are checking it out and sending assistance to you. What's your trenching? Oh, I haven't a clue. We turned off a side road and we're hiding in some woods. Ten twenty-three. I heard it. Oh, isn't he marvellous? A genuine knight errant. Oh, for this, I'm going to buy him the biggest and best antenna on the market. <coughs> shh, shh. Keep your voice down. The CB volume as well. <gasps> I can hear voices over by where we left the car. Oh, no. Chris, maybe we'd be we better. Lady Breaker, <gasps> the police tell me they're just turning up the lane by Wendleton Woods. Oh, I hope so. We're under pressure. Do they know that these men are armed? Roger. Oh, I wish they'd hurry. Hey, do you hear that? And how? But I hope there's no biting. There wasn't. Hazlitt knew the game was up, and he and his men surrendered immediately. While we were making a statement at Bolston Police Station, our knight errant turned up to eyeball us. To our astonishment, he was a handsome young lad of 14. <laughs> you never can tell with voices, can you? As for the stolen atomic warhead... It was stopped before reaching its hiding place. Hazlitt had intended selling it to a foreign-based terrorist organization for six million pounds. Instead, he got 30 years. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.